you've seen, um, it's uh, this is just like 0.0% of the violence. And this is just a little bit of the reality, but it's worse than this, you know? Um, but we want this story to, to bring hope and um, reignite the fight for freedom, you know? Um, and I feel blessed that I was able to, to be there and present to, to capture that moment, you know, when, um, uh, uh, when we, we dreamed, we, we dreamt of, of this, you know, of a different time, you know, for our children, for our country, for ourselves, for Africa, you know, in a way. Um, because this is not just the reality of Uganda. It's the reality of a lot of countries. It's the reality of Russia right now. It's the reality of what they want to do in Ukraine. And this could, have, could be the reality of America. As you all saw January 6th, this is what could happen. If you have a tyrant in power, there is where you could end. So um, this is not just a story of Uganda. It's, uh, it's a human story. And I'm, I'm just fortunate and honored that I was able to, to be part of this film. film. Mm -hmm. Thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so first of all, um, I want to ask you, how did you get to know Bobby Wine and when and how did you start uh, thinking of making the documentary? Um, firstly, I want to thank um, the team that was behind this, uh, of course, National Geographic that has made a lot of this possible, um, uh, Ventureland, Southern Films, um, my co-director and producer of the film, Christopher Sharp, um, and Bobby and Bobby, and, and the Ugandan people who have allowed us to tell this story and to capture these, these truths. Um, Bobby, um, as a musician, has always stood by the people, by the Ugandan people. His music is very conscious music that he has continuously um, kept by highlighting the, the struggles of Ugandans. Um, every election season, Museveni pays the big artists in Uganda to sing him a song. You know, and all of them usually sell, sell themselves to him, but Bobby has been very consistent over, over, over the years. Um, uh, so as a young man, um, I wasn't very, I would say, I, I, I was paying attention to the politics. Uh, I have a background in journalism before I got into film, um, but I, I, wasn't in, I wasn't participating in it, you know, but I was paying attention with what was going on. I was unhappy. Um, at the time uh, when I and Chris met in uh, 2017, November, um, I had been working on uh, uh, stuff for the BBC Africa Eye and shooting other things for Vice here and there. Um, and Bobby had just gotten into parliament and he actually, sorry, he was getting into parliament and he was speaking to me as well. He was asking us to get involved was asking us and telling us that we can speak through our leaders, that we needed to vote for our leaders, you know. Election day is like a holiday, you know. I, I, would, I wouldn't care to go to vote or go to, you know, um, uh, to these rallies because they're very violent, as you see. And Museveni has made it very specific like that, you know. Opposition rallies, uh, you're either going to get shot or you, you know, you'll end up in jail or things like that. So people will avoid them. But he came and said, no, we actually need to start getting involved. Regardless of the reality of this, we need to get involved. And he was speaking to me as well. So I was paying attention at the time Chris came and he, I had been thinking, this guy, you know, he could be, a film has to be done about this guy. And Christopher Sharp, my co-director, reached out. He traveled to Kampala to put together a team. And I met him and he told me, Moses, I want to make a film about this guy, you know? And I was like, wow. And I mean, I had been listening to his music. His music is amazing. He's an incredible artist. 
sadly, he now cannot perform in Uganda because you know there's like a blockade on his music. Anyways, um, so Bobby's in Parliament. He's speaking to everybody and and myself, and you know, and his message cuts across through edge, you know, like edge um, class or any. He speaks to to our hearts, you know. So uh, Chris said we he wanted to make this film and. You know, I was, I was right on board and I said, thank you for coming to make this film. And there on we started. And it's been a great journey. It's been five years in the making. So much has changed, including about myself. You know, I cannot live in Uganda anymore. Um, I had to flee the country under very unfamiliar circumstances. I became a totally different person after five years of, of uh, being followed and, you know, being... Um, uh, at some point locked up in prison and, um, you know, locked up in police cells, denied access to a lawyer or family for, for, for days and, you know, uh, intimidated and, you know, uh, cameras broken, equipment taken and, you know, um, uh, computers and hard drives, all, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. You know, it, it's been a lot. Um, and the return to normalcy for me was... 16th March 2021 and I had arrived in America with my wife uh, in California and I was sitting at this hotel room the next morning on we arrived on the six, on the 15th now this was the morning of the 16th and I'm sitting at this hotel and it was terrible terrible place it wasn't like a great hotel I'm, I tell you guys it wasn't the comfort of the hotel room no I felt this this peace, you know, this, this, like a certain presence of being alive, you know, of uh, just like feeling like I could breathe and recognizing that I'm actually breathing, you know, looking at flowers and trees and seeing how green they are. And I did not know how that feeling had left me or when it left me. And it returned that morning after five years of being part of this film. And I was like, wow, like, what was like, what's this, you know? Anyway, so um, I'm, I'm really honored and I feel such great gratitude with how this film is being received around the world. And, you know, um, and I hope it, it can bring about any, some kind of change or awareness or, you know, yeah. Thank you, so, yeah. sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, yeah. we feel honored to have you here. <laughs> And you can see uh, how much heart you, you put in all this and how much you already answered many questions I had for you about how you changed. <laughs> and I was going to ask you also, like, since you uh, mentioned also that you, you've been arrested, you've been harassed and cameras um, uh, broken and also you, had, uh, you, you were in lockdown without the access to a lawyer. Um, how do you compare the freedom to do journalism in Uganda when you started and right now? Wow. Um, Uganda is such, um, I would say, we are at a time where media houses uh, are on, like they have to renew their contract, their licenses every couple of months. They don't really have permanent licenses. so. The, the situation has really shifted. So they, there's like a very, um, they, they have to censor themselves, you know, because a lot of this cannot be shown on TV back home, you know. Um, uh, journalists work under very unfamiliar circumstances. I, I was shot in the face uh, three days um, after the nomination day at close range, right, uh, the guy was standing like right there and he pointed the gun and shot, shot me right in the face. You know, it's healed now, there's a scar and everything, but you know, it would have been really bad if I didn't have a camera in my face. I was holding a camera right, right in my face. And it, it, it lessened the, the effect, you know, of the projectile that came, it literally brushed, but I had a, the, the, you know, it was such terrible impact that I lost consciousness for a couple of, uh, I would say a whole minute, you know. But by that time, you know, 
lots of things had happened that I had gotten uh, to a point where you don't act normally, you know, you, you, you know, it's not like normal journalism. Every moment as you're covering a story, you're thinking of what could happen, you know. Uh, how can I save myself from this situation if anything goes wrong? As we speak, there's, I think, yeah, two, uh, well, one of them, uh, journalists who were actually working for a, a national broadcaster, a Uganda, uh, government newspaper. Both of them are out of the country. One of them actually just made his way to safety. Uh, he's in this country. I can't say where, but he's in this country. The other one is stuck in a refugee camp in, in, in Africa, trying to make his way to a safe place. And journalists, uh, I mean, if you, if you cover Bobby's stories or the opposition stories, you're constantly thinking, um, where could this end up or stuff like that, you know? Um, and they've denied accreditations to lots of international journalists when the moment they find out what you want to capture and stuff like that. Uh, so journalism has really, um, I mean, um, there's still journalists that are covering the situation back home, but they're under such incredible pressure. Um, yeah. And what kept you motivated uh, through such harsh conditions? Um, I think for me it was the story, and um, it's such an important story to tell, and and a very urgent story as well. That you know, um, in moments of, of of thought and like, you know, should, do we continue? Do we, it was, it was really how important this was for 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 for, for, the, for generations. You know, um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I saw like. I imagine everyone here was shocked to see how much violence uh, was used against the people. And you said it's not even the full picture. And I imagine like how much work of so many people uh, went into this to gather all that footage. And I remember seeing in the credits that you thank the people who participated that couldn't be credited for a risk for their safety. Can you talk a little bit about this co collective work? Yeah, um, again, this film is just, it's been a great, like a labor of love. Everyone that was, has been part of this, you know, uh, from Christopher Sharp, the producer, to John Batsek, uh, incredible, incredible uh, film producer. Uh, 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 the, Paul Carlin, the editor, you know, uh, we, we've had tons and tons um, of, of drives of almost uh, 80 plus terabytes of footage, over five years of filming. Um, and as you see, the, the film worked very well uh, as we used um, some news, news footage and news stories and other camera people, people who are, there's a lot of uh, citizen journalism as well because of the, the, um, the self-censorship by media houses. So we use a lot of phone, uh, phone footage and, you know, and, and it really helps lift the story forward. Um, so it's, um, it was a big network of, of course, uh, after working on the story for five years and being very close to Bobby and you know, living, having a bedroom in his house, meeting all the people in the political and, and around the journalists that were covering this, we built such great uh, contacts you know, with, with collaborators and, um, yeah, um, but it's been, um, we started cutting the film three, three years, after three years of filming, because we thought something might happen, either to myself, to Bobby, or to people around, and we wanted to start working on the story, so that when that happened, we were ready to, you know, to sh present something to the world. So, um, yeah, it's been a great collaboration. Um, and um, yeah, uh, Christopher Sharp was in the UK uh, cutting, you know, spending hours and hours in the edit room with Paul and, 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 um, and Joan. And it's, it's been such a great work, work experience. And we, we are so happy with how it has turned out. And yeah, happy to share it with the world.